Hello everyone and welcome to episode 137 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I am Sandra and this is a podcast where I talk about crochet, knitting and sewing mainly. You will find the show notes for this podcast on my website which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll pop a little link in the down bar below and that's also where you'll find my patterns and tutorials. You can support the podcast by giving me a thumbs up or leaving a comment or hitting subscribe or dinging the bell and you can also send me some little um, thanks, love, whatever it's called, I don't know, super thanks I think that's what it's called, yeah, that's the love heart one, <laughs> should you feel so inclined. Um, I think that's it. Oh, I'm also on Instagram as Sandra Jerry HRT. That's it. <laughs> so how are you? I hope you've been keeping well and finding some nice, lovely, calm crafting moments. Um, things continue busy here. We have now dropped my daughter off at university. So, so far away. So yeah, she's got a few weeks under her belt now and um, yeah, it's going well. So that's good. Very exciting times. Um, but it's very strange not having her around after she's been in the house sort of well since spring really more or less what with exam leave study leave and um, yeah and then the holidays and everything so yeah it's very odd it's very quiet around the house now but crafting has continued I've got quite a lot it looks like to show you so some of them that you've that I've been on the podcast before I might go through a little bit more quickly um, it's a lovely sunny day here today it's an open door podcast day yeah so I'm enjoying that a bit of late sun um, but yes let's crack on where to begin let's update you on progress on a few of the things that I've already started um, so let's go with crochet first I have all of these motifs that I've been making for the Leaves and Lace Blanket which is a pattern by uh, Hafner Linson. Um, it's in a book of hers, I think it's called Mandela's to Crochet but this is a blanket pattern from it. So I've got all of my whole hexagons that I need and this is them arranged in the order they're going to be so I've laid them all out on the floor and um, and then I've piled them up into the rows and stacked those up so that represents some sort of organised order despite how it may look and then I set to work on the half hexagons so we have these ones are the half hexagons to go down the sides so they're like this so I've got a few of those and then there's also half hexagons the other way to go at the sort of the tops and bottoms so that goes like that so that's all of those ones so I've got those completed and the ends woven in now so I'm doing quite well on that and then I've taken a little pause on that now I've got that all ready and I've got the layout all sorted um, I've taken a little pause and I've wound up my edging colour so all of the hexagons have one more round on them to make a uniform edge and you then join on that edge and then the border is in this colour as well so that's what I've gone for this sort of beigey colour I had one of those already in stock so this is a stash busting project so all the other colours I already had in in um, in stock I'm not a shop in my stash and I had one of those um, so yeah I did need to get some more of that colour to sort of do all the edges and everything but that's all ready to go so I've progressed that to that stage which I'm quite happy with how that's going so I put that on one side for a bit to work on other things um, oh and the yarn is Cascade Pima Cotton just so you know on that in case anyone asks and then my other work in progress 
is this one. So again, quite hard to show because it's just a stack of motifs. These ones are quite floppy floppy, so they're hard to <laughs> they're hard to show you. Let's hold one up. So again, this one I have talked about before. This is going to be a pattern for um well, not for anything, just for Cherry Heart. It's going to be a new Cherry Heart pattern, um, which is based on a photo of a vintage blanket. So I had stopped progress because I had run out of yarn and I was going to try and get Stylecraft to source me some, but they couldn't get any stock. But luckily I managed to find some elsewhere. So this is what I'm using, the Stylecraft Natural Bamboo and Cotton. And I actually I calculated how much I needed <clears throat> which was about 30 balls and then I did find some in stash so I had about eight so I made some and then I was sort of waiting again waiting again for yarn to come in and then um yeah then I sort of thought well I'm going to have to order some then so I placed my order but instead of adapting it to what I now needed I think I would decided I needed like 22 <laughs> balls I actually ordered like 32 by mistake so that's good so now I've got absolutely tons of it <laughs> way more than I needed um but never mind it's a beautiful bright white color I'm sure I will use it on another project so that's absolutely fine and I've got other colors of this so I could easily you know there's plenty of things I could use it with so that will be fine um so yeah, so I've got a little bag of these out to be carrying on with. So I think I'm halfway through my motifs now. I think I'm going to need 42 for the size of blanket I want. And I've got 22 here now. And I'm just working on another... Um, yeah, so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time on that. It's a very summery project. And, you know, obviously the weather's had, well, it has been turning up until the last few days where it looks very summery and beautiful again. So it's a good time to work on it. Um, it had started to sort of feel very autumnal and quite cold. So it didn't, it seemed a bit out of keeping. I don't know. Sometimes it's just nice to work on projects that are suitable for the season, isn't it? Although it's, that's not always possible when you're trying to create patterns, obviously, because you're kind of working ahead. But... Or well, potentially you are. I'm never really that organised. <coughs> yeah, excuse me coughing. We've had um, COVID here, actually. Um, yeah, we both came down with a horrible, nasty old cold. And um, I didn't even think about it, really, whether it was COVID or not, because obviously all the regulations and everything have gone now. But I was just having a conversation with someone about um, them having the COVID jab. I suddenly thought, oh, actually, this is a really, you know, it does sit very heavy. It has made me struggle a little bit with my breathing. I wonder if it is COVID and we had some tests left. So I was tested and sure enough, you know, the little bar came up straight away and I was like, oh, okay. Yep, that's COVID then. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm fine now. I was only felt sort of really groggy for a couple of days and then... Um, yeah absolutely fine otherwise but I do still have a little bit of a a little bit of a froggy throat bit of, and a bit of a cough left so yeah anyway that's by the by so that one's progressing so those ones are not new to you oh and then the other one that is not new as well is this one which is my little flower hexes that I've been making so last time I was showing you these flowers and I was saying I had to join them so I have now joined let's show you this like that so I've now joined all the ones that I've got so far is that fitting on just about so there we go um yeah, so I've just joined them with these white hexagons. So the colourful ones are... 
just four ply yarn is what I'm saying just a mixture of uh, leftover four ply yarn sock yarn minis and so on so I've got a whole rake of different things in there and then I'm joining them with drops baby merino which is actually a sport weight but I've used it before on sort of four ply patterns um four ply blankets and it seems to work up nicely with it and it's it's got a nice feel and smoothness to it that I really like so I've just stuck to that because I know it and I like it um yeah but I've got all these joined now so that's how it's going to look and now I've just got to make it bigger <laughs> so this is one of those you know slow burner projects obviously it takes quite a long time to make much progress with these tiny tiny little two round hexagons um, and I realize I haven't joined them in the most efficient way I don't know why I couldn't work this out but I was I was sitting and thinking about how to join them and I was laying them out so I wanted one hex one white hexagon between each oh goodness me do you know what I'm saying I wanted one white hexagon around and then the next hexagons to join and I couldn't get it to work out quite right and I thought I'm sure there's a way of doing this more efficiently with less white hexagons but I was laying them out that was one apart and then I couldn't get one I couldn't get this right up here and then it was offset if I put it in and here so I had to put it another row down I thought this I'm sure there's a better way of doing this and then I saw someone else was joining um, patchwork hexagons together and they had got them just one right row apart and I was like ah so instead of putting them one hexagon apart between one like that, if I'd done it that way and just put one hexagon apart, I could have put the next one there and then the point of the other one would have been in there and I wouldn't have needed to do so many white hexagons. Yeah, but that was, I saw that after I had got to this stage and I have woven all the ends in. Trying to be a good little girl, weaving all of my little ends. Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to change it now, but it's okay. I think it looks nice like this. They've got a bit more space between them, but that's not a terrible thing. So that's what I'm going with now. That's the system we've got set up, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit annoying. But yeah, I'll just show you the back as well, because look at that. It's like a honeycomb. It's I love how the back looks so I'm joining them with my modular join um, which is, if you haven't heard of that I used it first on my Battenberg blanket and there is a video tutorial for how I did it for the Battenberg blanket on my channel which I'll pop in the down bar below for you um, yeah so I've adapted it slightly because I'm joining in a slightly different order for this um, but yeah the basic principle of this is the same and you just get this lovely honeycomb feel at the back which you, that could be the front easily couldn't it with that nice honeycomb feature that could easily be the front it almost makes it a double-sided blanket actually which is quite nice because I, I, I don't often say this with crochet but I genuinely think both sides are, are as pretty as each other sometimes you can like if you have a, like a you know a granny square blanket or something like that where you're alternating so there is no real right side and wrong side but yeah so I like that I like both sides and I like how it's coming on so I've had a little rest from that as well once I joined it but the next stage will be making up some more flowers so I think that's how I'll do it I'll make a batch of flowers and then I'll join them on and then make a batch of flowers join them on and so on but yeah I thought it would take me absolutely forever to sort of make it this size and although I so I suppose I have spent a reasonable amount of time on it it felt like it wasn't taking too long you know I started to sort of make good progress joining another hexagon in and yeah it just it just didn't feel as bad as I thought so yeah that's coming on so those are all kind of um, um just waiting for me to come back to them again I guess this is the kind of one I'm working on at the moment so let's talk about the new projects now 
So what else have I been up to? I've got some finished projects to talk about as well so I'm going to go on to them. So this is a, well it's not really a knitting a crochet or an anything project so it's a sort of just a general craft project. So I made these lovely Liberty baubles using scraps of Liberty fabric. So I, when I made my flower garden quilt, which I've talked about many times, but I'll shove a picture in so you know if you're new here. Um, it's lovely to have you, by the way. But if you are new here and have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll pop that in. So, and all when I cut out all my shapes, I've kept all my scraps of various different Liberty with a view to using them for something. So even the really tiny scraps, I thought I will keep. And my sister actually mentioned this idea of making baubles with the little scraps. So I kept them with that in mind. And yeah, I've made these up now. So I've got eight and I've stuck to just one colour per bauble. Just gone for all different ones because I, I collected all my scraps up into sort of colour categories. And yeah, it was just a very quick and pleasurable little project. If you've seen my recent Quiet Moments, the um, Quiet Moments end of summer one, I was showing me making them in that. But yes, yeah, so the baubles um, are just cardboard. They were brown cardboard when I got them. Um, I just got them from Amazon. And because I knew I wanted this fabric and the fabrics, you know, it's got quite a white background. I didn't want the brown to show through and look dull. So I gave them quite a few coats of white paint before I began. Um, and then once they looked reasonably white, I just used some poster paint, just some sort of children's poster paint that I had left over. Um, and yeah, so once I painted them, I just literally got the little scraps of fabric, laid them out and just pieced them all over until I had a nice um, bit of cover all over. This was the hardest one to do because I had the smallest range of scraps. I didn't have that much purple and it was all very similar fabrics but... And last but not least this one. Um, so the glue I used is actually by Decoupage. They do the, um, you know, the paper decoupage. So it's, um, you know, you would decorate a box so you would sort of stick paper shapes on a box and then varnish over it. That's what it is. And they do um, matte and gloss versions, all kinds of different versions of glue. So you, you um, paste the ball, you stick your fabric on and then you sort of coat over the fabric as well so it kind of gives it the kind of top layer in one go. So I've got a matte glue so it's quite hard to tell that it's got a top coat but it is on there. But yeah it's it's very nice to do, it's quite therapeutic just painting it on and dabbing your little fabric and painting it over again. So yeah that was fun to do. So there we go, let's use up some nice little scraps in a very pleasing way. So they will all go on my handmade Christmas tree. On my Christmas tree full of handmade decorations, I should say. And then I've got an actual sewing project, which was inspired by lovely Alice Caroline. So Alice Caroline contacted me and said, would I like some of their new exclusive beautiful Liberty fabrics and I could do a giveaway. So I was very excited about that. So the giveaway is going to be on Instagram, by the way. I'll come back to that. But yeah, so let me show you the fabrics. So there is this one. So I think it's the um, colourways that are exclusive. So I don't know the name of this fabric, but that pink is just beautiful and the fabric is just beautiful. This fabric I have seen before, I think it might be called Wiltshire. But I definitely used it in my quilt. But again, so I think it's the colourway that's different on that. So there's that one. And then this one is Betsy, which is, I think, possibly my favourite Liberty fabric of all. And again, so that's just a beautiful pale pink colourway. So those are the beautiful exclusive fabrics. 
and um, yeah so they sent me a fat quarter of each of those that I could make a project out of so let me show you what I made here it is so it is a bag for my yoga mat so I've got all the three, three fabrics um, along it there I've got a little bit of linen at the top and I've lined the top with lovely Liberty as well Liberty ties and I decided to give it a little carry handle as well the last minute I don't actually go to yoga class this is just for me to use in my house it's when I do my um, like stretches in the morning and evening so I had a bad back a while ago um, yeah which gave me trouble for quite a long time and so when I was going to the uh, what do you call it physio the physiotherapist they give you sort of ex stretches and exercises to do so I've tried to be quite good and keep up with those um, so yeah so this is my mat that I get out and do my stretches on um, can't say I'm perfect but you know one tries um, yeah so I just roll up this mat it's actually let's show you like you haven't seen a yoga mat before in your life um, I try to roll it up different ways because if you always roll it one way it kind of when you try and lay on it it kind of always curls up and it's a bit annoying so it's got that kind of cork side and then the bright blue side so of course if I roll it up the bright blue side and I have it sat in the corner it's kind of a bit obvious and looks a bit sticks out like a sore thumb which I don't like so I've been meaning to make a bag for it for ages so that's good oh and I also did the little just had some little straps to keep it together and I also made some liberty ones of those as well um yeah so now I can just put it in its little case and that's much better to prop up in the corner I don't mind seeing that at all so that's nice yeah I'm pleased I finally got that sort of long you know get around to project it's a long time getting around to um yeah so it's nice to have that done so yeah look, do look out on my Instagram and um, if you pop over there now it might already be on there I might have already got it up um but if not it will be up in a day or two so yeah keep an eye out because um, Alice Caroline are going to post anywhere in the world so that can be open to everyone um, but yeah three of these gorgeous fat quarters to do something with um, yeah so keep an eye out on Instagram for that it is only on Instagram and then last I feel like I've been very efficient with my talking I haven't actually been waffling that long yet it's a minor miracle isn't it let's see how the next one goes see if I don't blow it all in the final project <laughs> um, so the last project is actually a Christmas Christmas related one <laughs> I'm whispering it because I know some people don't like to talk about it <laughs> too early but yes I have had this in my mind to make since last year last Christmas when I was inspired by many different vlogmases I saw um, and this is like the last thing on my list I've made some of the things already but this was the last one so I've been kind of saving it to a more what's the word seasonably seasonably appropriate time but I've started it nice and early because I'm not sure how long it will take me so anyway let me tell you what I'm talking about so it is this pattern here so I was inspired to make this when I saw Amy's um, podcast, no, Vlogmas, sorry. So that's Amy of Taylor S Studios. Um, she was making a version of this pattern and she was also inspired by someone else, which was, I think it's Gertie. It's a sewing podcast. I think it's called something like Gertie's Sewing patterns I don't know um anyway she's very famous I think it's a huge podcast I don't actually watch it myself but she makes lots of kind of 50s and vintage stuff I think I'll pop pictures in now of them both so Gertie was wearing her did a Christmas vlog 
podcast and she was wearing her cardigan which someone had actually made for her so that was really lovely and she was saying this telling the story of how she made um of how you know this cardigan came about it came to be made for her so amy saw this and she was really inspired by that so she wanted to make the cardigan for herself so those she went on a whole journey about finding the pattern for it and so on and making her own version so then i watched that and i was inspired by it and i wanted the cardigan as well so now i've been on a whole journey about making it so the reason there's a whole journey is because the pattern i did manage to find i couldn't amy mentioned that she'd found it and i couldn't find it anywhere and i almost gave up on the idea i actually brought another pattern instead that i thought was quite similar which was this one which is a jumper but it's still got that snowflake and the little you know spots on it i didn't like this sleeve but i thought well that's fine i could just take that out so i brought that thinking that might be the closest thing but i kept returning to this picture you know when you've got something in your head and you're like yes but i want that and it's just it's ever it is slightly different the way it's done so this one it's the snowflakes are on the dark colour, but then it's got some of the lighter up there, whereas this one does it differently. And I was thinking, could I bring the snowflakes down and make them dark and darker and put the white above? I don't know. You know, there comes a point when you're adapting a pattern so much that I don't even know if what I'm going to do to it's going to work. So anyway, so this, I went on the hunt for this pattern again and I found it this time. So I'll pop the link in my show notes and everything for you. But the only problem with this for me is it is in French. And I am absolutely rubbish at languages. French, if anything, I can have a bit of a go at. Um, I'm probably best with French. But understanding a sort of technical written directions French is a whole nother ball game. Now there are things online that will help you translate French knitting patterns. Um, so I did start to try and do that. But to be honest, I was so unsure that I just didn't feel confident going ahead with it. And I thought, I don't know if it's better to try and attempt to translate it from the French or whether it would be better just to get a basic sort of pattern must be a plain pattern like this and just put this work this pattern onto it so that's the option i went for so it took me quite a time to find an appropriate pattern i actually printed out quite a few six or seven or eight possibly even patterns to look through um i just went for a free pattern not because I mind paying for a pattern normally, you know, I'm quite happy to pay for a pattern. It's just I needed to be sure that I could do what I wanted with the pattern before I would potentially pay for it. So I was looking at free ones just so I could see, see what the patterns was, see what the stitch count, see if I could kind of work this motif in as I needed to. Anyway, so I found one in the end that I thought would be the best mix, the best fit, which is this, which is Enchant by Martin Story, so it's a Rowan pattern. And I think this is going to do what I need it to do. So this is actually made with DK yarn and the original, I can't even remember what the original was made in. Um, yeah, it's probably about a DK. So it's 24 stitches in 29 rows. So that's about a DK. So I got this to make it Cascade Superwash 220. So I wanted to find something that was wool, proper woolly wool. And I wanted to find something that was vaguely affordable. And the choices, and I wanted to find something that had the colour I want. So the choices. I think it was colour that was particularly the limiting factor. But the choices were not great at all. I think it was between this and one other. And what the one other, the colours, wasn't as good. Um, yeah, so I ended up going for this. Now, on the site I brought this from, they described this as a DK weight yarn. But I would say that it was an Aran weight, personally. 
so they're saying 20 to 22 stitches in four inches they're recommending it for four to four and a half needles so a four is about a DK four needle would be about a DK so it's either a very thick double knit I'm just looking at what the, st the um, needle size on the original pattern I think three and a half possibly um, yeah so this is a little bit bigger basically and like I say I feel like it's an Aran weight really but that's by the by that's what I've got that's what I'm going for so <laughs> it was this colour I particularly wanted so I think Gertie's original one where you would have seen was red and white Amy's was the one I really liked and she had a lovely sort of pinky peach oh she used John Arben yarns now I don't know if they are back now but they actually withdrew them because they were resourcing the yarn the um, sort of the blends I think they were changing so I couldn't get hold of that at all um, it may I think it was due back but I was I was too impatient I thought I wasn't sure when I was going to start this I was clearly too impatient to wait so if it's back now that would be annoying but hey ho at the time it wasn't there I couldn't get hold of any so this was what I went for it's a little bit darker than Amy's it's a bit darker than I wanted but it is not bad it's not bad and I think it will look cute so this was my gauge swatch so I've done a gauge and I'm going for it's a little bit of a guesstimate as my garment making always is because the gauge on the pattern is slightly different um I'm shaking my head because I always make life so hard for myself so based on the gauge I've chosen my size that I will make in my gauge I think will come up the right size so it's slightly smaller <laughs> than I am now but we were worked in this gauge I think it's all going to work out fine I think it's all going to be fine it's going to be fine it's going to be fine so that's my gauge swatch for what use that's worth um it's my flute on the back where I've taken it across um yeah but I like how that's coming up that's looking nice so that's on a four and a half needle and the pattern is four so yeah so the sizing is going to be different but having measured it all out worked it all out I think I'm good um let's show you what I have so far because I thought I'll just start the ribbon and just do a few rows of the dots just to see how it looks but actually once I started I kind of couldn't stop so I've got quite a bit yeah I love it I love how it looks um, so the ribbon I actually knit on smaller needles as directed for once and I have changed it as well I've made so many ad adaptions so I was saying I won't use this because I'll have to adapt it so much I did really want the cardigan though but um and now I've picked this which is the closest pattern that I could find to this that I could add the snowflakes to but I'm still adapting it a whole bunch so I don't know if I knew enough to make a cardigan pattern for scratch I'd pretty much do that but I feel like I need something to base it on but anyway so I've changed the gauge I've changed the needles I've changed the yarn and what else have I done differently <laughs> I can't remember oh that was it this one is knit flat so the original pattern is knit flat and this was knit flat as well but I thought I can't bear it what is the point also to knit it all flat I know you can sort of say about seams and the structure and integrity so yeah I guess but I decided to knit it in the round oh I've run out of battery hang on a moment right hopefully that's vaguely how we were um what was I saying yes yeah, so I've adapted it to knit in the round as well so I think that'll only affect under the arms I really won't it because you know above that I'm going to have to knit separately anyway and join it together but um yeah so one of my main reasons is because you knit this from the bottom up so you have these nice floats because of the way the frequency um 
there's no way of taking the floats back across because of the spacing so you have to cut the floats every row which I knew about because Amy was talking about that in her uh, vlogmas so I was prepared for that so I thought if I do this whole bottom half in one go that saves some of those ends so I did briefly consider knitting it all in the round and then steaking it which is what you would normally do with a colour work cardigan isn't it so that you could knit all of this on the right side rather than trying to purl it um, <clears throat> which I did consider but to be honest I just thought I've never done that before that's a whole load no more you know that's more information I've got to then find out about and research and worry about going right or wrong and I don't know how well I'll be able to try it on or off which I want to be able to do if I was sticking it so I thought by the time I'd sort of worked all that out and worried all that through I might as well have just woven in the ends to be honest with you you know I mean with crochet you get so many ends that it's just not that big a deal to me and although that might look absolutely horrific to some people that amount of ends especially if you're used to knitting to me that's you know that's nothing really <laughs> so yeah I thought to be honest for the aggravation and for the sort of agonizing over how to do it I just weave them in and then that'll be done I think that'd be easier around so that's my plan so yeah so that is coming on nicely so I've kind of had to stop myself working on that because we're only in October and it's going to be a Christmas cardigan so my plan is to have it done ready for the Christmas special episode um, of the podcast which I normally do every year um, so yeah I'm going to have to not work on it constantly otherwise it will be finished before the end of October and that would never do would it so yeah but I'm, I'm enjoying that project so far whether I'm still enjoying it when we get to this stage is another matter but yeah I think that is it for me I think I've told you everything that I've been up to I think I've shared all my latest projects with you um, yeah I think that's all there is to say Um, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Thank you ever so much for being here. Thank you for trying it out. If you were new, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking with me if you are a returning viewer. And I shall hope to see you in the next podcast, whenever that may be. I'm continuing my sporadic episodes this year because that's just the way this year is going. Um, but yeah, I hope I will see you next time. Until then, enjoy some lovely, quiet, calm and peaceful crafting moments. And I'll see you soon. Bye!